you're this dude gassed up Robert E. Lee he said, in Gettysburg. <laughs> quote, he goes, quote, have you guys ever noticed that Robert E. Lee isn't in favor anymore? No, <laughs> <laughs> the Confederacy. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 29 of the Coconut Curry Podcast. On this episode, we will discuss our NBA playoff predictions, react to some of the play-in games that happened yesterday, as known as Tuesday, and we're going to have our first annual Coconut Curry mock draft where we go through the first round of the NFL draft. Each of us will draft teams, we'll make trades with each other, and it'll just be a nice chaotic version of the draft this year. But before we do all that, if you're new around here, we are three college students at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Justin. We have Raj and Peter here as well. We're on all platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. We just chat about sports and hopefully offer a fresh new perspective on things. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot as we try to grow this channel. Yeah. Um, you always start with reacting to comments, and I have one to react to this week. Oh. Shout out to everybody who watched the Caitlin Clark clip because it got highly viewed. Not a lot of comments. Somebody said they hated my analogy. Listen, buddy. It was a great analogy. What was the analogy again? The CVS stealing. Oh yeah. Versus ref calling. Like, sure, is stealing a federal crime? No, it is. Yeah, well, it's not a federal federal crime. crime. It's a crime. If it's petty theft, it's, it's, yeah. it's still a crime. It's a crime. Is setting an illegal screen a crime? No, but it's still illegal in the sport. Yeah. So I thought it was a great analogy. My dad texted me, said he loved the analogy. So you know what? <laughs> F- you. Um, <laughs> My dad said it was good, so it was good. Um, Moving on to disgruntled moment of the week. This is our favorite segment where yes. we discuss things that made us dissatisfied or angry, or we talk about other people. And I know Peter is very disgruntled. This I am week. very disgruntled. Um, so for those that don't know, for those that haven't watched some of our uh, older content, um, we're all nerds. We're all big nerds. Um, not we, me. Yeah, definitely okay. not Justin. Definitely not you of all people with uh, how many hours? In, oh, no, you have a lot of hours in Hogwarts Legacy. I don't know what you're talking about. No, surely the man. Surely could, not Raj. Surely the man that could tell me everything there is. It surely know. wasn't us two who did a Secrets of Dumbledore <laughs> review yeah. two years ago. I don't know what you're talking about. Surely it wasn't. That wasn't us. That wasn't surely us. Wasn't but if you'd YouTube. like to go watch it, yeah. scroll down yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, on our yeah, page. You can find it. Highly viewed video, by the way. Yeah. But um so one of the new shows uh one of the new superhero shows that's been coming out recently is invincible um it's like it's just an incredible show like i like it's it's hard to describe the show without like kind of spoiling it but basically it's like a you know a twist on like the classic like oh kid has superpowers grows up to become a superhero whatever it's a very mature take on it that's why uh people like are really starting to enjoy it the writing is incredible but good lord the first season came out in 2022. It's 2024. The second season came out in, or no, the first season came out in 2021, I think. Yeah. Yes, it was It was tail end of 2021. And <gasps> Schwarbaum! Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm run. Yep. Phillies are Let's playing. Go. Right but basically, long story short, this release schedule of this show is absolutely abhorrent. <laughs> it is so bad. We have waited for like two and a half years for four episodes to come out, then a three-month break, and then another four episodes to come out, and now there's no timetable for the third season. It drives me insane. Now, it is, an, it is an animated show, so it doesn't make sense why it takes longer than a normal show, but good lord, these animators need to just be locked in a room. In a closet. In a closet. Because I know that's what they do with all the like the animes over Japan. They have the worst working conditions possible for these poor animators. But great content. But God, I need I need this. Back to back! Trey! Uh, Trey Turner with a home run. There we go. <laughs> so uh, Dare I say the bats are going. <laughs> they might be. I guess I'll just keep talking about Invincible and then we'll just yeah, keep, keep going. going. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's it's just the content is genuinely some of the best superhero content I've ever seen in my life. But I'm going to be legitimately 30 years old when the show ends, and I'm 22 right now. That's way too long to wait for this. I might have kids by then, by the time that I'm going to be finishing the show. Like, no, it, far too long. It kind of reminds me of The Boys a little bit, where The Boys had so much popularity and whatnot, and yeah. then they haven't released anything in two years. It's going to be even more time for that. So, like, just kind of fell off the face. I mean, the release schedules cause so much trouble because yeah. you can really, like, lose a show. People have, we have short memories as human beings, and... Mm-hmm. We move on very quickly. Good reason to be disgruntled. Yeah. Raj, this is your your segment, buddy. What's got you disgruntled this week? Nicholas Castellanos. <laughs> um, my man. 
when you swing at a, ba- I understand it's hard to swing at a baseball when a pitcher's throwing it 95 to 99 miles per hour at you. But here's my thing. You've been playing for how long now? And um, do you know what a down and away slider is? <laughs> do you know how to tell when someone's going to throw that way at you? So um, when you step up to the plate, bud, when you're going to start, um, you know, doing your at bat, please, for the love of God, stop falling for the down and away sliders. <laughs> that was horrendous. That wasn't even a slider. The dude threw it like three foot three feet off the plate to the left or to your right and you still swung at it like this is the plate and this is where the ball is and you're swinging at this yeah he was swinging at pitches that were like almost a foot off the plate like i can't keep defending you it's when you see batters like that at the plate you're just like they don't know what they're doing like (laughs) they're lost they're they're lost at the play and they need to get back on track scrap them and sign liam castellanos to a (laughs) (laughs) that's all i that's all we need now to a future deal yeah, Nick Castellanos has not been good this start. Figure year. that. But the Phillies up 2 nothing on the Rockies yeah. early, so that's yay, good. Yeah, Trey, well, Rockies, yay, Kyle. That's not really a big flex right there. Hey, they're, hey, a win's a win. Yeah. That they're like four. Can't take anything for granted in this league. Um, we will talk about baseball eventually when other sports are done, but it's a lot <laughs> oh, of sports right wow, now. Ray Luto with a base hit? I've never wow, seen this him pitcher's not. A, this pitcher's in hell. He's not yeah. really. He's, he's getting shelled. He should get pulled. Two anyway. home runs, one hit, one out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first inning. Um. My disgruntled moment of the week is the end of the school year um, slash just graduation. So, Don't say that word. Don't um, say that word. <laughs> when we have we have about a week left in the school year, so final exams, final stuff, and then I will be moving out of Pittsburgh for the future for at least the next four years, um, probably for the rest of my life. So <laughs> I'm currently dissatisfied, angry, and sad because I'm leaving. <laughs> um, but. That's womp not womp. what you came here to hear. Womp, see. Womp, you yeah. ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what you came to hear. You came to hear about the NBA playoffs Playoff, and yeah. the mock draft coming later today. Stick yes. around, audience retention. Um, so yesterday we had the first games of the Western Conference play in. I will be honest here and gloat. I predicted both rounds. Did I say it on air? No, because we didn't record. But yes. I, it, I was right. Um, so we had the Kings beat the Warriors to get into that next game. Jeez. Lakers beat the Pelicans. So now we'll have the Pelicans versus the Kings fighting for the eight seed to see who will lose to the Thunder in the first round. <laughs> and then we had the Lakers advance to go play the Nuggets. I had another sweep there, but... So let's hey, talk... talk about my Pookie LeBron like that. <laughs> let's talk. We're going to do full playoff predictions with amendable changes. What we're going to do first is talk about those games. The Lakers beat the Pelicans by four or so points. A game down on the wire... Both teams did not shoot the ball well, but Zion got hurt with like three minutes yeah. left. But let's talk about Zion. What a game. Yeah. Great game. Actually, like unironically, we've been clowning Zion since the inception of this podcast. <laughs> um, but he really has been turning around. He showed out in the playoffs. He got like tweaked his hamstring, I think. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he's actually going to be able to play against the Kings not, either, no. which mm-hmm. sucks because he was unguardable. Yeah. Like just bully ball in the paint. He just couldn't be this, stopped. This game is Zion's career right now wrapped up into one singular game. So people like, I think it's been missed a lot when Zion's played. He's been really good. Um, he had that one year where he like made an all NBA team, I think. Um, but he was, all, if he didn't make an all NBA team, he was really good he was that year. I think, and then was. he, he hurt himself mm-hmm. and it was out for a while and has had trouble with his weight and he misses time. And this was just a perfect moment. He had 40 points. He was unguardable, really good. And then he gets hurt at the end of the games because as people have noted, his body really can't hold up in a league that requires so many minutes and so much movement. And now he can't play in the next game. So, yeah. um, but I thought it was really good for people to see just how talented the, the kid is. I mean, he can't shoot a ball to save his life. But LeBron pain, was sagging off like eight yeah. feet. Um, yeah. There's Ben Simmons treatment, which is not something <laughs> you want to be compared to. But it was really cool to see him have his moment. In the paint, he's like unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. And the Lakers, on the other hand, um, good good w- way to get a win because their star player shot like p- it was piss poor. Yeah, LeBron shot twenty percent. Um, AD didn't have a great game, and it was really the role players that stepped up for the yeah. Lakers to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have to go play the Nuggets next round. But I did want to mention because I'm very passionate about this for everybody in the media who said that the Lakers should lose to the Pelicans because they get to avoid the Nuggets. You should be fired. Mike Greenberg <laughs> for ESPN. Love that guy. I watched him when he, Mike and Mike was an ESPN radio show for a while. My dad and I used to watch a lot. Loved him there. I've loved him on Get Up on ESPN. But you need to like lose the mic, bro. Like The idea that you are saying that a team should lose to the Pelicans so that they get to the, the nine, to, like to the, so they get into the game, the seed, they're the eight seed, so they get to play the Thunder instead. Like 
Absolutely not. And I'll get into the reasons why I think the Lakers have a shot to beat the Nuggets in a little bit. But this idea that you would potentially risk missing the playoffs altogether yeah. because you want a chance to avoid the Nuggets, which, guys, they're not actually that much worse than the Nuggets. Um, when they're playing good. Yes, when they're playing good. And we'll, we'll discuss all the reasons there. But it's just, it's just ludicrous that people would say they should intentionally lose that game. And obviously the Lakers didn't feel that way. And they came out and won the game on the road and get, to the, get right into the playoffs of the seven seed. So any other thoughts on that game? Oh, sorry. I was Nick Castellanos is that bad. Uh, currently 4-1 right yeah. now. Um, yeah. Yeah, two two doubles. Or a base, a double and a base hit. Yeah. 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 The, this pitcher's getting shelled on the Rockies. Yeah. And they showed a clip of Casty when he was still on the Reds nailing up like a fastball right into that dude pitcher's face. Yeah. Oh, so... <laughs> Uh, Cassie striking out here is doing it again. No in between. Okay. Anywho, but um, um, my our, Pookie Bear LeBron is very good. Uh, he didn't look great that game. I know, he but was still, not well, shooting great. Here's here's what you like as Lakers fans. LeBron took a charge from Zion Williamson he and took got multiple. Up. Yes, he took he got up. Well, he how. took it and was like celebrating yeah. after. Yeah, <laughs> it was it's, uh, Molly Morrison's uh, person for Bleacher Report. Um, big grizzlies fan she tweeted and she was like i don't care like how big or strong you are how are you young are you i'm never taking a charge of Zion. <laughs> i will it's, never take it's a, a charge. brave man <laughs> yeah that is Crazy. a that is a brave, brave. and at, at 39 yeah. taking the charge from zion and then celebrating that he took the charge like my man's in it for the team that man's locked in he's locked yeah. in <laughs> um very exciting and then we had the warriors lose to the kings they look terrible and what was the most predictable outcome yeah. you could have seen coming everybody who pretended this is another thing with the media everybody who pretended the warriors had a shot there were people chris broussard um people on espn saying hey let the if the warriors get in and they play okay don't, the don't let them in don't let them in don't let them in they're an experienced team they're not good nope. they are 16 so and O against the bottom of the league so the nets the blazers the wizards the magic Ma- no, no, no not, not the magic, magic. um <laughs> The Pistons, they're 16 and 0 against those bottom feeder teams yeah. and not above 500 against everyone else. Like they were not a good play. They were not a good team. They don't have enough talent on their, their roster. Draymond and Clay aren't what they used to be. And then it's just Steph. And that's exactly what happened this game. They got exploited. Obviously, the, the Warriors were cold and Sacramento took advantage of that. But Sacramento also did some things defensively that you really like to see. They were guarding Steph with Keegan Murray. <laughs> yeah, they were um, like, hey, which no one else in this team could score. Yeah. Hand Guard. up, hand up. I said Keegan Murray was going to be a bust. He's clearly not. I got to be better than that. Um, but they were guarding him with Keegan Murray, so then every time they switched, it would just be De'Aaron Fox switching onto Steph. So that would be a favorable matchup, and so they couldn't really run pick and rolls. Yeah. And then the other guys didn't. Clay scored zero points. Zero points. Yeah. He's done. I think because there was like the clip of him like after the game, kind of just like looking around like the stadium and everything. Like he's done. Yeah, in, I, in Golden I, State. Think, I think it's get over. ready to say Nihao Clay. Yeah, he's either he's either saying Nihao or he's going to some team that needs a shooter. But Orlando yeah. Magic. <laughs> so I, I guess. So I guess. Yeah. So I guess what what do you think the Warriors should do from here? Uh, I think they need a new kid. Blow it up. It's obviously, you, obviously, you have Curry as like your vet, but like that's it. You need a new kid. Like Draymond's getting Draymond old. is might as well be locked up in prison at this point. Clay is washed. Like you have nobody else from the old guard there besides Curry. Wiggins like, decided just to be bad. Wiggins is bad. I. I think this team needs a solid year to reset, like you guys kind of said. Um, yeah, they just need the new kid. I I understand that you. I don't think like I think Clay. He had a bounce back season compared to last season. He shot forty two percent from three. Um, he still was very effective in his role, but I don't. Think How he, effective would somebody else who's cheaper, yes. younger in that role be? And like he's he's at this point going to probably be more of a spot up guy. Can do some nice things. Can put the ball ball on the floor sometimes. He's, he's like not what twenty sixteen Clay was and. Yeah. That's what this team needs right now. They need a, a second star. I mean, look around. Look at the teams in the, the West right now. Um, <laughs> look at Timberwolves, Cat, Anthony Edwards, Suns, KD and Booker, Nuggets, Jamal and Jokic, Lakers, AD, LeBron. Like these teams, even if you look Pelicans, BI and You and need Zion, somebody else as like the two. You need somebody else as the two, and neither of those players are offering that. So you're just going to be outmatched. Uh, sorry, I just even overlooked um, Luka and Kyrie. Like they're two headed monster teams and Mm -hmm. you've kind of got the Warriors who are playing very Steph centric and hoping the role players are good enough. And and they're just not right now. Yeah. And I think they need to let Clay go. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to trade Draymond away as much as people want to say you're not going to be able to trade him away. Yeah. So just kind of run it back with the team. 
try to see if Kaminga can take a few steps and try to get under the cap because uh, the owner of the Warriors said they need to get under the cap because he's been paying an absurd luxury amount of luxury tax, for, tax forever. Yeah, mm-hmm. for a long time. And that and they won, that won him two championships, and that's awesome, but now you've got to get under the cap. Yeah. Who uh, Clay reminds me of right now is like Ray Allen towards the end of his career yeah. where it's like he's still an amazing shooter, but it's like he can't be like – that like who he was at one point yeah. like, that amazing like distributor shop producer like do everything it's no, like it's a, but hey you chuck him the rock he's gonna make it. it's a really good comp and i mean ray allen still in the back half of his career made a huge shot in 2013 finals when they yeah. drained exactly back out to bosh rebound rebound bosh back out to <laughs> allen three point bang, bang tie game with <laughs> uh lebron actually talked about that on the um podcast episode yeah. today yeah um, he said oh. that he was like, yeah, I was a little lucky. <laughs> um, Can't wait to see Bronny in a Duquesne uniform. <laughs> anyway. Um, Kings, Pelicans, who wins? Uh, I think it was Zion out, Kings. Yeah, Kings. Uh, that's what I was, I was just, uh, yeah, Kings. Yeah, and I think honestly, Kings, uh, OKC first round is actually a really fun. Dude, that, they're both really young teams that just shoot. Yeah, really, <laughs> it's going to be a fast paced game. Yeah. I think, I think Sabonis at center with a. Like a chat figure in the middle. Like I think it's a really interesting yeah, matchup. A, yeah. You got Shea versus De'Aaron Fox. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be like, fun. Yeah, I think it's, it's gonna, gonna be a, a fun, really fun, fun matchup. matchup. So I'd love to see that happen. Um, the caveat here is like the Pelicans are five and zero against the Kings, and obviously Zion's around for those games. But it's like, does any residual like we yep. just own this team happen? And yeah, you know, Bi or CJ can kind of lead the team and finally turn it up when they need it to. Yeah, but I yeah. think the Pelicans need to have a hard look at their roster. I mean. Yep. Bi is very good. CJ is very good. Zion's very good. Why isn't this team better? I know they fell off at the end of the year. They used to be the sixth seed, but it's like they need to eventually take this next step. Like, yep. I mean, I clown our friend Jacob a lot, but like in the beginning of the year, they were the one seed, and people were like, "Oh, is this the Pelicans' year?" And now they might not even make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. So not good. And I know the West is deep, but um, playing games tonight: Sixers, Heat. Who do we got winning that game? Sixers, the Sixers. Okay, I think so too. Um, it could, of course, one game. Series, anything can happen. Jimmy Butler could do a Jimmy Butler meme, but yes. I don't think he will. I think people are underestimating how bad that bad is a strong word. How not good the Heat are. Like th- this isn't this Heat team is it's not, not the same Heat team. It's it not the before. same Heat team that went on a run last year. It is not the same Heat team that went to the finals in 2020. This is a very different team, and I'm not saying they still can't make it an interesting game against the Sixers. I'm not saying they can't take a game or two off the Celtics because they still have Jimmy Butler. They still have Bam Adebayo. They still yep. have Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson. But in a win and go home kind of situation, I just don't know if they're going to do it. Yeah. Um, should be an interesting game. That doesn't mean that, you know, Philly's going to show up for that game. It's going to oh, be yeah. great energy. I'm looking forward to it. And then I think we all agree that it doesn't matter if the Bulls or the Hawks win because the Heat will probably beat that team. Probably, yeah. Let's hope. I do think <laughs> the Hawks are going to win tonight, though. The Hawks, yeah. Uh, DeMar DeRozan's daughter's not there. Yeah. I gotta bet the Hawks money line. <laughs> Hawks money line. All right, I like it. My only concern with the Hawks is that, like, the last game of the season when they were probably still trying to play, the Pacers just went in and scored like 150 points. Yeah, on them. yeah, that and was like, demoralizing. I'm like, oh gosh! So like, the Bills are just watching tape and are like, oh okay, so this is every way we can score on this team. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, look at this tape. Do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like everything they did. Let's just do that again. Exactly. Um, but that's the East. Um. And then we're going to just kind of walk through matchups. We're going to pre- actually make our official predictions for first round matchups here. And then we'll go through and predict everything out quickly, but we'll keep making predictions as it yeah, goes cause, on. Because especially with basketball, it's so chaotic yeah. every single time. And, and we did really this know. with football too. Like we, we get the, the right to change our picks if our team loses because it's just boring. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll start off. We both think the Kings are going to win. So let's just assume the Kings advance. Yep. OKC Kings, who wins? OKC. OKC. Yep. I think it's OKC. You have a game count for that? OKC in five. Uh, I'll give them six. Yeah, I was gonna do six too. I think the Kings have some interesting stuff. I think yeah. they'll at least get one in Sacramento mm-hmm. with that crowd. Yeah. Um, Luca and the Mavs versus the Clippers. Give me Luca. Luca. Give yeah, me Luca and Kyrie. They're they look ridiculous. It's unfortunate because I feel like everybody's picking the Mavs right now. And I know. I, and I, don't I don't want them to. <laughs> I don't want to be like the person who's just like riding the wave. Yeah. But yeah. I just I never forget Luca just dominating the Clippers a few years ago in the yeah. playoffs and just making everyone his daddy. Yeah, no, he, their son. Yeah, yeah, their son. Yeah, he was their daddy. <laughs> and uh, I'm just like, it's gonna happen again. I'll, I'll give him six as well. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I think it might, it might be five. Okay. I was gonna give him five. Okay. Um, oh damn. Yeah, I think it might be a bloodbath. And also like Clippers, like Kawhi's injury. It's no one really knows. Home at this it's point. Home. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see there. Um, Suns versus the three seeded. Minnesota Timberwolves. Give me the Timberwolves. 
I think this give is me the Wolves. I, I know think you're going to pick the Suns seven. because you're a Suns slut, but you know whatever. This, <laughs> it's, the, it's always the Suns. In five. Oh, five. Five. Yeah, I'm taking the Wolves in seven. Do you know what the Suns record against the Timberwolves is this year? You literally just went on a rant about how the Pelicans are five and zero oh against the Kings, and you took the Kings because they don't have Zion. <laughs> I'm totally picking the Pelicans. My prediction for the, the West in season tournament was Lakers were going to win, and then Pelicans would be either the Warriors or the Kings. That was my prediction until their best player got hurt. Okay, well, is Beal back for the? Beal's back. He's good. He oh wow! Dropped, Thank he, God. He just dropped like 30 points in the Timberwolves. I've the other seen day. this Nets experiment before with the big three with KD. I'm not falling for it. Nope. There, you the the Suns yeah. have dominated the Timberwolves yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. all year, all year. And it's gonna, they're going to do it again. They're Anthony Edwards five. is going to embarrass them. No, not a chance. I think the underrated part of this Suns team, it'll be very interesting to see, is their defense. those players can play really good defense when they're locked in and engaged, and I will be very curious to see what their defensive ceiling is when they get into the playoffs. And the Timberwolves offer an interesting matchup because um, Yusef Nurkic is not the biggest um, nor like the most talented big man, and you're running two big men who are very talented for Minnesota. And then, so you're running KD as the four spot, and he's going to have to match up with um, Cat or Rudy. He always matches up with Cat in this matchup, particularly. But and then you've got the three guards there um, for the Suns as well. It's going to be a big series on like the defensive matchups and, and whatnot. I think it'll be very interesting because they're going to have Devin Booker, Beal, and Grayson Allen all working together to defend Anthony Edwards because he's going to be that point attack. Oh guy. no! What is Grayson Allen going to injure somebody again? I mean, Grayson Allen just got a bag because he's been fantastic this year. Forty-eight percent from three or something like that. Forty-six or forty-eight. He's going to slide tackle like Anthony Edwards in a game and like break his ankle. That's the only way they're going to win. Suns in five. T Wolves in seven. This T-Wolves will go. Seven, this yeah. will go. To this seven. will go the distance. But I, I got the Denver Wolves. Yeah, I just don't. I think the Suns. I CP3 lo- played on the Suns, and that has permanently cursed them. <laughs> it's permanently cursed them. <laughs> um, Denver Nuggets versus Los Angeles Lakers. Nuggets, Nuggets in five. Nuggets in... Yeah, five. Don't you dare pick the Lakers. Don't you I, dare. I might have been slightly radicalized because I, got <laughs> an argument, I got an argument in an argument with one of our friends last night about the Lakers being a better matchup, and so I might have just gone one way entirely. But I'm going to pick the Lakers. Jesus Christ. There's and no shot. Because Who is guarding Joker? D'Lo. <laughs> Anthony Davis. He physically cannot. We've seen this experiment before. They uh, play 23 seconds out. of good defense. And then hear Joker throws up a 37 foot three and then drains it. Here's why I'm taking the Lakers. I'm not betting on it, by the way. Um, <laughs> Thank God. Last year. In their four-game series in the West Conference Finals, the Lakers lost by a total margin in those four games of six points. So they didn't win any of the games, and they lost them all by like a combined margin a average of six points. So they were very close in all those games. I think the Nuggets are not as good as they were last year, and I think the Lakers are quite better. Therefore, I think it is at least going six. Yeah, the Lakers are so much better. They're and the same seed. LeBron <laughs> has not lost a win-or-go-home game in like three years he's like perfect in game sevens or the in season tournament so i think the series gets so you're to running seven. on the assumption that we'll get to seven i'm running on these well i think i think it's definitely going six i think the lakers are gonna get one of them in denver when you, in i think they're gonna get one of them in denver so and they're gonna go back and at least get one in la i think it'll be there and i think um oh they have a chance God. there in a game seven with lebron james one last hurrah to we go need to and, study and your brain so i think I know, I think people are completely underestimating how much better this Lakers team is than last year. And listen, it might like the Nuggets are a fantastic team. It might not matter, and they might still go roll through the Lakers. But the Lakers have a lot more talent and a lot more interesting options to defend folks like Jamal Murray with. They have Torrey and Prince on the team. Very interesting for matchup wise coming off the switches. They're not going to be able to put Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. in as many ball screens because they can switch out and put Torrey and Prince, Rui, and folks like that out onto. Um, Jamal, they have Anthony Davis, who's been playing better this year and playing more this year. So I think he's going to be more equipped to handle Jokic this year. Glass bones is going to be out by game three. Yeah. Well, that's that, the concern there is that Anthony Davis gets injured, of course, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just think, I think the Lakers, okay, so what happens when they shoot like they did against the Pels? Like what happens? Well, I think they that was probably lose. more of an aberration. Well, they will lose that game, but that's, <laughs> I mean, you can say the same case for any team, right? Like, Oh, what happens if they just like shoot that way? Like, well, yeah, it wouldn't go. It wouldn't go great. I think I'll give you that the peak of the Lakers is a lot higher than people are giving, but like 
That's they have to be perfect to beat the Nuggets in seven. I just don't I don't buy that they have to be perfect because I, I think the Nuggets have just not been as good this year and they've they've they're running. Oh no, are, they're only the two seed this year. Yeah, I they I just don't think the way they've <laughs> Done, like played these like ga- games like they they've become vulnerable. They've lost a lot of games to Phoenix this year. They've lost a lot of games to OKC this year. Some of the top teams in the West. Um, what do you want them to do? Losing to some of the best teams. They have a losing record against those teams. They're like one and three against OKC. They're like two and like three against uh, Phoenix. Like they're they're not. I'm saying they don't look as good against good end competition this year as they did last year. Now is that a product of having a little bit of a hangover from the championship last year? Could be. But I also think it might be a symptom of a greater problem. Which just, is just get to the their East. team isn't as good. Just get so, to the East. Lakers okay. and seven. Nuggets. Okay. Oh, do you want to just go through and predict the rest of the West now? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Um, in everybody's hypothetical matchup, we got OKC versus Dallas. Dallas. Oh, oh. it's going to go to seven, but I think the Mavs will clutch up and take it in seven. I. Oh. I think I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, I'm I'm taking Dallas as well. Yeah, well, I'll take them they got a lot more experience. I think the Thunder team, the, the Thunder team really just lives and dies by like their shooting. And like if they just get cold, like they're just screwed. I There's no answer for Luka in the league, but I specifically don't think that answer is on the Thunder. And that's going to be really challenging for so, them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And this is where like this is, a lot of people think that Mavericks can go and make a long run because they can play the okay. OKC in the second round. Yeah, okay. um, that's going to be a fun series. Yes. Really fun. All right. So who do we have? You have Justin has seven Sons. six. Seven six. Well, yeah. okay. So you, you two, you can go first because yes. you have. So we have Timberwolves Nuggets. Yeah. Who do you got? Well, basically a try. Um, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's gonna ooh, uh, because the, the there is there is no way you think the Timberwolves. Who are not going to beat the Suns are going to then go in and beat the Nuggets. We never said that. You we, just told me the Lakers that, can't beat the Nuggets, but now you're debating who can win between the Timberwolves and the Nuggets. The Timberwolves They're are better, better than the Lakers, barely, if they even are better. So you're agreeing that they're better? I don't think so. Oh my god! Okay. Just give me the Nuggets, whatever. Nuggets Shut up. in seven, I guess. Nuggets in seven. Yeah, I'll agree with that. It's gonna be a bloodbath of a playoff. So because be they have, like, they actually have big men that can somewhat guard. Like they have more than just one big guy in their team. Yeah, but uh, Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> okay, it's still a that, bigger ass body in the middle. Yeah. Like, what do you want? Also, Cat isn't like terrible. Oh, you should see his playoff. <laughs> you should see his playoff career. Oh, oh my god, so. you should see the Lakers shooting. Oh my yeah. god, it's been terrible. The Lakers made the Western Conference Finals last year. They won they won the championship four four years ago with the same bubble nuclear, nope, Mickey Mouse four, bubble ring. Nucleus. When did made, the Suns last make the Western Conference Finals? That was 2021. And what happened after that in the play well, in the finals? Devin Booker so had to play in a game. So that was 3 seven. years ago. I will promise you I will never take the Suns in a game 7 cuz Devin Booker felt like he doesn't show up to the arena on in game 7. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So what is your logic here? For the Suns? No, not for the Suns. I'm saying you're saying, "Oh, well, Cat's bad in the game 7s. Why are you no, picking no, Cat's them? bad in the playoffs?" The, the Suns haven't made the playoffs in three years, or they they haven't went far in the playoffs in three years. Yeah, haven't they been like first round yeah, picks they, they every had, year? Like, I, I don't think it's like relevant because they haven't had like the team they have. Oh had. right, sorry, they haven't had Kevin Durant. Oh wait, they did last year, and you got they acquired him halfway through the season. It's Kevin Durant. <laughs> like figure it out. <laughs> I, I think this idea that the this dude is a top like this dude is easily like a top ten player of all time. And you can't figure it out. We're, the fact that we're holding the Suns to acquiring Kevin Durant halfway through the season and they didn't perform well in the playoffs. Then this year they bring in Bradley Beal. They have a full season to work. Kevin Durant is super healthy throughout the year. Like this team is way different than what they were last year. And they like their starting lineup Whatever. has been very good. Yeah, real good at the what six seed. Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns is going to average like twelve points for the series. Everyone's going to yeah, and Anthony Edwards is going to average forty. No. Anthony Edwards, he's injured. He's injured. Oh, we're getting like on a side rant here. It's been such a long episode. Um, God. Anthony Edwards. We need to split this into two. <laughs> maybe Anthony Edwards is a very interesting case because in past playoff matchups, he's been able to score. But when you able, you're able to double team him, he's really not a great passer. And it'll be interesting to see, like, because he's right at that age where you're kind of propelling him into like 
can he get into the top 10 player in the league status? And it'll be very interesting to see if he starts to make those reads out of the situation. Because, yeah. right, when you, you can't double LeBron, for example, or Luka because they're such great passers and they make you pay for... If only you had some really big guy to throw to in the middle. Yeah. Oh, wait, he's got two. Well, okay, but as we mentioned, Cat <laughs> is not a playoff performer. And Rudy... Surely, historically, Rudy nobody's ever turned around a playoff performance, ever. No, I'm, I'm not saying there's not a 0% chance that Timberwolves can go. I just think it's funny that you think the Timberwolves even know we're are going to clear the Suns, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, they might have a trouble Justin's against being the Nuggets. a degenerate Suns fan Whatever. and questioning our picks anyway. because we picked the T-Wolves over the Suns. Uh, anyway, just give me the Nuggets <laughs> to play the in the Western Conference Finals. Who cares? Against... N- the Mavs. The Mavs. Mavs. Mavs in five? Or Nuggets in five? Nuggets in five. Oh, okay. I think the Mavs I think I think the Mavs will win. You think the Mavs are going to the finals this year? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I I don't really care about All the right. West. I don't really give a all right. The West is just a bloodbath. Honestly, I could flip a coin. Honestly, yeah. It's, gonna, it's probably going to get nuked after the first round, yeah. so it doesn't matter. It, it's going to get nuked if the Clippers beat the Mavs, because everybody is taking the Mavs. Yeah. If the Clippers beat the Mavs, everyone's going to be like, oh, we didn't prepare for this possibility. Yeah. Um, in my scenario i'd have the suns lakers and i have zero idea who i would pick in that matchup bro what are you zero idea you I... just went on this rant about how good the suns are and you're like but the lakers though man the lakers are i just I, the lakers are gonna beat nuggets and the suns i think are a lot better than people think that would be like a great series that's going seven but I can't, unfortunately, pick Devin Booker in a Game 7, as I mentioned. So, so I would take the Lakers. You're and it would be a Lakers-Maverick yeah, series. Which a Lakers-Maverick series in the Western Conference Finals would hit like crack. That would be so good. It would be so much fun, but it's not happening. And then the Lakers are going to go to the Finals. That's what I'm saying here. Why is everyone riding the Lakers bandwagon? I don't. I don't think many people are riding the Lakers band. I think this is this, everyone's riding. They the Lakers. barely beat. They got bailed yesterday with Zion's injury against the Pels. They were not going to win that game. It was a one-off game. Like I, I don't think this idea that we can take a lot from this play. This in season, they also played this team like, two days earlier and just like destroyed them. So, oh, but then in the winner go home game, they played a lot better. Wow. Hmm. Huh? The the Pelicans had to play their hardest in that game because that was going to debate whether or not they got the sixth seed or not. That's so what both saying. teams were playing extremely hard. The Lakers kicked their ass, and then both teams played again extremely hard the next game, and the Lakers barely won. And they played one game at home. I think they were at home in that other game. And then the one game on the road. So they just beat the Pelicans. Like, they're 2-0 in the Pelicans in, like, win-or-go-home type of games. And, like, the playoff, that's a very playoff atmosphere. So I don't think it's like, oh, they barely got a win there. Like, they were playing a playoff team. So... Even Lakers fans were saying, bro, if Zion didn't get hurt, we were losing that game. I mean, again, that's just like, it's speculation. It's unfortunate, but anyway, still. Just, just, just who do you have going to the finals? He has the Lakers. I have the Lakers, okay. I think. So you have the Lakers. In the- now you sound like every Lakers fan. Anyway, now let's get to the East. L- let me make it clear. The Lakers don't beat the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets are going to the finals. Whoever, I think whoever wins that 2-7 matchup is going to go to the finals. All right. Give me the East. Um... In our scenario, it would be Heat Celtics first round. We all remember Heat it would be six. very, very funny if the Heat won and beat the Celtics in the first round. They're not doing it. Heat and six. I'll, I literally might take the Celtics at five. Yeah, I'm leaning to Celtics five, Celtics and six. I'm taking the Heat and six. As we mentioned, I think the, Cel- the Celtics the Heat team is six. Is the Celtic, no, nah, the Celtics are regular season merchants. Oh I've God. seen enough. Anyway. Uh, I just the Heat's team's not like quite what it is, no. and of course, this is speculative off of. Uh, the matchup tonight but then we got Cavs orlando i have no idea i literally have no idea like it's gonna be teams, such a poorly watched <laughs> like toss, no Cavs. one no one's watching this yeah like no one's watching this i'll take the magic because i like their song i'll take them in six i don't know i'm gonna take the Cavs in six i think their experience in the playoffs last year despite losing will serve them a lot more Realistically, it doesn't matter who wins this game because they're not beating Boston. Yes, that, that, <laughs> like, yes, that, that is the collective opinion. Yeah, There's a zero like, percent chance either team, unless Boston gets injured, unless Boston doesn't make it out of there, and then it's a whole yeah. Thing. But like, yeah, they're not beating Boston. Yeah, Raj, who's your pick for the mid off? Oh, I say Cavs. Yeah, oh, sorry, 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 didn't hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bucks Pacers, which is going to be electric. You See, mean, I just want the Bucks to now, win. Caveat, not caveat. Asterisk, Giannis will be out probably for game one and, one and two. Still need the Bucs. I still want the Bucs winning. You know what? Give me the Pacers. Why not? Okay. Give me them. Give me them at seven. My brain is telling me to pick the Pacers, but some part of me thinks that this... The Bucs are going to figure it out. The Bucs are going to figure it out enough yeah. so that 
Like the Pacers are very like explosive offense. They score a lot of points. Mm-hmm. Bucks defense isn't that good, but I want I do wonder if there's some point of now we're in playoff basketball and we're looking at matchups that they'll have a little bit yeah. more success. And then I think if Giannis does come back and it's one one, like I think all Giannis needs is one one and he can take it from there. He's been really good this year and people haven't really talked about it. Again, I think the Pacers are a terrible matchup, so I could see them winning. I think the Bucks would win in seven. It would take a lot out of that team. Yeah. Screw it. Give me the Pacers in seven. Why Love not? it. See, I just I I need the Bucks and what I don't care about how many games. I just need the Bucks. You just need why, the Bucks. Why do you win? need the Bucks? Because then he wants oh, the Sixers okay, to play yeah. them. Yeah. Yep. I need the script to yeah, load. So then and now then it's yeah. The matchup that would break our group chat. The New it's, York it's Knicks really not going to break the group chat because uh, for those that don't know, Sixers fans, Knicks fan, also more Knicks fans in the group chat. It's really not because now that Randall's out, the Knicks really don't have a shot. Yeah, like they just they just don't. Yeah, like because they got everybody back, everybody was locked and loaded, and then Randall gets hurt, and it's like, oh, we're screwed. Like they, I'll take Sixers and like most unbiased six. take. Yeah, Sixers either in five or six. Yeah, I on. love my Knicks. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love them. I would love for them to win the series. I just don't see a realistic way for them to do it. I am disappointed that Julius Randle won't be there because still... then it would have been such a great mm. series to like see both of them at full strength. Oh, like... it was more because I still think the Sixers would kick their ass. Um, I'm I think... unplug your mic in <laughs> half second. Um, I, I think the Sixers are just more built for like a playoff type environment. Yeah. Um, love Jalen Brunson. He's been he's been fantastic this year. Way better than I ever thought he would be. Um, but it's just going to be a really uphill battle for him to yeah. carry a, a Knicks team. I know they're twenty and three with OJ and Anubi in the lineup. Mm. I, I get that. I just don't. They're not. They haven't. If you look at the record against playoff teams, it's not really as strong as you'd hope for a two seed to be. Um, they've definitely lucked out, which is not no fault to the Knicks. They've had a ton of injuries this year. They've lucked out in standing wise just because teams beneath them have been just so been injured. Nuking, yeah, they've just been like nuking each other. Like, like for yeah. example, the Sixers are two and a half, three games behind three games. I don't know why I said two and a half. There's no half games right now. Um, <laughs> I think they're three games behind the Knicks this year. And Joel Embiid played like 40 some games. Like, yeah, yeah, obviously that gets flipped there. Um, the Bucks have had their own problems this year with coaching wise. You feel like it took a last minute win for them, so you kind of feel like, oh, okay, the Bucks, Sixers. So okay, now the Knicks are more of the fourth best team, and I think that's where they are. I think they're the fourth best team in the East. Yeah, they're just unfortunately playing the second best team in the East. Exactly. Right now, it just and, the way the seating worked. It yeah, just sucks, I mean, but. it's unfortunate because the Knicks were in overtime against the Bulls, and they could have just kind of like lost the game, fell to the three seed, and gotten the Pacers, which I would have taken the Knicks in the Pacers series. Yeah. And then you would have gotten a Milwaukee Sixers bloodbath. Instead, you have yeah. a Knicks Sixers matchup, which is very un- yeah. unfavorable for yeah. the Knicks. So it's unfortunate for them. The because, Knicks just need a big man. Yeah, they do. And I mean, it would be great for them if they could win the series. It's just like I just don't know if they're doing it. It's tough too because I yeah. we'll talk about team futures too. But like I just don't know where the team can improve here. They've made so many trades already. But um, going with that, that would be the Celtics versus the Cavs Celtics. or Magic, Celtics and like we all. Four. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, I know I have the Heat. Forgot. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. You got the Heat, Cavs. <laughs> Give me the Heat again. Shut up. <laughs> You're the worst. I'm writing emo Jimmy. Oh my emo god. Jimmy. Emo, actually, Jimmy. emo Jimmy. Emo Jimmy. Yes. I do actually think the Cavs would be a pretty bad matchup for the Heat if that was to happen because of the way they run uh, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. Um, but God, just seeing like if the heat, the power of friendship, I, you know, if, if the mat, if the matchup of, oh, I hate the heat so much. If the magic <laughs> of the heat and magic happened. I would turn off my TV. <laughs> yeah, cause I know, cause I know exactly what's going to happen and I don't want to watch it. Orlando magic. Um, Orlando magic. <laughs> Um, God, he, anyway, like, Celtics in four. And, like, yeah, I guess either of those. I, I think the Celtics would probably beat the Cavs in five. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we got Bucks versus Sixers. The Sixers in six. Doc Rivers finally sends the Sixers to the Eastern Conference Finals. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. I think that's Sixers and six. I, I need I take the it narrative. Too. Yeah, I think it would be a fun, really fun series. Mm-hmm. Um, I just. Like, I don't think Dame, Dame Lillard right now is not playing like he's much better than Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. And that's concerning because I think Embiid and Giannis are as close to a wash as you can get. Giannis is slightly better. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, all right, who's got the second, third, fourth best player? And yeah. it's like, I think you go down the list, it's the Sixers and they just play like more of a team. Yeah. Um, people underestimating the Sixers um, role players. They're not underestimating the team. They're under- underestimating the role players really good. Kelly Oubre, Tobias Harris, eh. Um, but Kyle healed. Lowry's been fantastic since he's been on the Sixers and people yeah. have been campaign. That would be campaign revenge game. Campaign. Yeah. Um, 
campaign has been really good. Campaign? And, yeah, the, the campaign for campaign. Yeah, campaign for campaign. campaign. for uh, Pat Bev. That would be crazy. <laughs> like a little matchup there. Um, but yeah, I think the Sixers role player has been really good. Nick Batum. Uh, we'll see if D'Anthony Melton. Ricky Robert Council. Yeah, so yeah, then what? It's Sixers. Sixers, Celtics in the Eastern Conference Sixers Finals. Sixers Heat? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, oh, well, wow. You have the Sixers going to the finals. I have then. the Sixers going to the finals. I, it's tough because... On the one hand, the Celtics did beat the Sixers last year. On the other hand, it took them seven games, and the Sixers had Doc Rivers. Yeah. So and you're saying the Sixers in the finals? I think so, which scares me. Yeah. Because I really don't think the finals this year is going to be the Lakers and the Sixers. That sounds, that sounds like the worst yeah. matchup like, ever. It, it, it sounds weird to Wait, me. you have two seven seats going to the finals. <laughs> oh, that's a tough look. <laughs> I'm going to... like. Listen, Yours if might be cooked. If you're, <laughs> you might be cooked. Listen, if you're listening to me right now, like I'm taking the seeds out of it. I'm trying to pretend like the seeds don't exist because <laughs> there's a zero percent chance two seven seeds are making it. But I'm just I'm picking with my heart here. <laughs> you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> I have Boston going to the finals. This is making me rethink this whole. Yeah, thing. genius. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> a Nugget Sixers finals. <laughs> okay, that's Wait, the final we all want. Switch from the Lakers. <laughs> I didn't like it. You're right. I didn't like the two sevens making it. Oh my god. That was enough. You that was just enough. went wait, you just wasted like thirty minutes talking about how good the Lakers were. And then immediately switched it up when I pointed out what their seed was. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Have you ever seen two seven seeds make the finals? That's why I was pointing it out. I know from the beginning. and that was a good point. That moved me. <laughs> oh my god. Love the Lakers. If they were a six seed, I'd feel differently, but why? they're not. Oh so a six god. and a seven seed making it is so much better. No, the Nuggets are a two seed. Oh, you, oh, you mean no. if the Lakers? Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm gonna take the Nuggets now. Um. But how much time have we wasted? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now I still get to say if the Lakers win, I still get to say I predicted this would Shut happen. Shut up. Um, it's Nuggets in seven. LeBron's gonna lose this game seven, and that's how they're gonna make it. Through. Oh my God. Right. Get out. I will update my bracket and officially submit it on the Instagram. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Sixers uh, Nuggets finals, which would be epic, and the Sixers would fall in seven. Unfortunately. Okay, so we got Nuggets. I'll, I have what? So I have Boston versus the Nuggets. I'll give uh, give me the Nuggets. Give me the Nuggets. Yeah, I'll give them in seven too because I think Boston's still really good. Who do you have? You had what? Heat. Heat Sixers. Sixers are gonna win that in probably five or six. So then Sixers versus who? You have Nugs. Uh, Mavs. Mavs. Oh my God! Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> that one's cooked. <laughs> that one's hey, cooked. You know what? I've seen enough. The process will be. Give complete. me the Sixers. The process will be complete this season. I would. I'd cry. I'd cry if the Sixers. Bring won my. The bring my hopes up. I want to feel pain I every give year. Give Kelly Oubre a ring. Please. He needs it. Sign him. Keep him. Anything. Please. Blank check. Gosh. All right, this was we'll, horrible. <laughs> we'll continue to check in on this however, was how everything is going. Line. Obviously, this is like a first round prediction. Um, <laughs> we really talked about this way longer than I thought. I, we knew we were going to talk long about this. That's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I have a lot of basketball takes. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, see. Clearly. You know we'll see say. more later. You two seven seeds making the finals. I could talk about basketball for hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Mock draft time. So how the mock draft is going to work is we're going to randomly pick who gets the first pick, the second pick, and the third pick. And then we're going to just alternate. So if Peter gets the first pick. I will he will also f- pick four. Yeah. And then we can make trades with each other. Yeah. And we're going to pick what we w- would do, but also with some level of realism. For yes. example, it's very obvious Chicago is going to pick Caleb Williams. So there's not going to be a trade in that scenario. Or like it's pretty obvious that... I don't even know what else obvious. I think the New York Jets are not going to... like They're just going to stick at their pick. Yeah. So like... That might be that might be like sure I could say oh well I'm gonna trade up to first overall and I'm gonna send the rest of yeah. this team's career picks to go to no yep. it's stupid so we can do all that but we're gonna just kind of do give a sense of it'll talk about what we think each team needs and what they should do yes so and f- t- uh, working with this we're using the NFL mock draft database simulator so shout out to them but good lord you need to figure out your algorithm for trades because the stupidest trades imaginable are on this site. So for those that don't know, I was very bored at work on Tuesday in between patients. And I was just like, all right, I'll look and I'll just like try to use this, make some trades, see what we can do. And I did a draft as the Giants. I'm like, okay, because that's my team. I'll see like what we can do. It gets to my pick. I have six different trade offers. 
And I'm like, okay, these are like stupid, stupid, stupid. At the end, who do you think is trading for the number six overall pick? I, I just wanted like a wild guess. Who would you think would trade for the number six overall pick? The Chiefs. No. No. Um, the team Broncos? played them at one point. Nope. Nope. Uh, it was the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, boy. Wow. Uh, for a receiver? So they, they did draft a receiver. Do you want to know what they traded for? Like Lamar what Jackson. they no, what they gave to the Giants? Only can trade draft picks. Yeah. Oh. So what do you think? What do you well, think it would have to be the first this year. So like 30. Nope. A fourth and a fifth. Nope. Next year's fifth and sixth. Next year's second. So this is going to take a while. They did not trade this year's first. They traded this year's second, third, fourth. Next year's first, second, third, fifth. What? For one pick. Nuke they traded an entire draft. That's crazy. To move up to six to draft Roma Dunze. <laughs> oh, and in that same draft, you want to know who the Bears selected first overall? J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so okay. Oh, okay. this is why we needed to be yep. selecting these. Yep. So we're going to go through here. We got a random wheel here. Yes. Let All me, right. Let this me is for this. who we'll pick right. first. This is for who's number one overall. In no one the wants first, to because it's there. The first annual uh, draft. It is me. God damn yeah. it! <laughs> All right, Peter. Here's the hot take time. Who are you picking with the first overall pick? <laughs> All right, uh, hot take. I am drafting Caleb Williams. Woo! Who would have guessed? Anyway. Just, it, I mean, they tried to make a story of it early on. It doesn't matter. Um, He's going one one. Does it don't matter? Yeah, it, no discussion. Very clear. This one. They, uh, the Commanders actually they invited a bunch of quarterbacks to play top golf in DC. And Caleb Williams wasn't even invited because everyone knows he's going to Chicago. Yep. Is that obvious? All right. Justin Raj. See who we got. I'm ready. I'm ready. Who's ready? Oh, 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 oh. Justin. Ooh. God, I wanted the Giants. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, does that mean Ross gets the yeah. Giants? No. <laughs> you bastard. All right. Okay. This is, again, this is not what I would do because I think it's very clear at this point. Yeah. I think the commanders are going to draft Jaden Daniels. Um, okay. I think he I agree with that. is a very similar quarterback. Mm -hmm. Not similar, but he's, he's got some similar things to um, Kyler Murray, who Cliff Kingsbury coached. Um, and he had a really good season. So I would personally not do this if I was Washington, to be clear. But I, I would, I'm not changing that pick because I think it's, I think it's likely yeah. what's going to happen. And I'm going to keep this intact. So Jaden Daniels goes to the commanders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Because that's just what, like, there's been a lot of rumblings. I think Adam Schefter literally qu is quoted saying he's doubled down on his take that uh, they're going to be drafting him second overall. So I think I would agree with that one. All right. So, Raj, you got New England. Drizzy May. Dr Drake drafting May. Drake May? Yep. All right. I think this is an interesting spot for the Patriots because I actually think a lot of trade down potential could be there. Uh, for I was them. about to say because wait, let me let me check because wait, so I have Arizona and then yeah, I remember trades are live here. I know that's what um, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to so I have Chicago, Arizona, one, two, Tennessee, now one, two, three, Jets. Now whoever's Minnesota should trade up into that spot. I think that would be Justin. Oh wait, yeah, Justin, wait, you should trade into that spot into what five? Into um three. no into three. No, I don't want to trade in the three. Okay, that's fine. Caveman. Drake May. Wait, did, I get the, did I get the Vikings? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so passionate about this. Okay. Oh, oh my god. god. I was thinking go. of the teams I wanted to wear over here. All right. Um, so you should have Drake yeah, I guess May. I guess should probably like figure out what teams I'm, I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Drake May goes to New England. I think that does like a very good job at like mm -hmm. giving them their quarterback. I think he is basically the exact opposite of Mac Jones. Yeah. He is all potential and. <laughs> zero poise like i always say <laughs> alabama quarterbacks have no success in the nfl jalen hurts is an oklahoma product <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> but um yeah i, I would agree with that because it, it gives them like a true like this dude's got a cannon of an arm he's young he can be developed i think gerard mayo i think as that head coach over there i think he's like you know a young head coach he's understands what the modern offenses will need i think they'll be able to figure it out over there um yeah. so yeah i think that's a great pick and now with Arizona, Arizona G. Hold on, I guess uh, this, this, we didn't think this through enough. Because oh, that's what I was saying. We hold should. on. Can we, we pause right here and get yes. a list of our teams? After further discussion, once we actually figured out who we were picking and everything, because this is a clearly very professional podcast yes. here, uh, we now know who we're actually choosing so we can make trades. Yep. Um, all right. So uh, at, four a, at a, four, a trade spot for sure. I'm not trading this. Oh. Well, <laughs> Arizona is 110% taking Marvin Harrison Jr. They no should take Marvin there. Harrison. You are not like I could see passing up for like the 
for a Malik Neighbors or a Roma Dunes say, you are not passing on Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, this no. dude came into college a professional athlete. This dude is – he literally is if Marvin Harrison – had a son who was six foot four. Like, that's <laughs> mm-hmm. what you're getting. A Hall of Famer. Like, this, there you go. You're not passing that up for Kyler Murray. Yeah. All right. So, my pick, Chargers. five Chargers, has also been a place where people think there could be trades. So, I don't know if any of you have you, trades for me. Do you have any? So, are you willing to trade that? Very unwilling. Very unwilling? Unless you have a good offer. Okay, wait. Let me see who's who's still on the board. Um, You've got... JJ McCarthy's obviously on the board. Neighbors, a dude's no. neighbor, all, McCarthy. If because I had Vegas, because I saw that Vegas was looking into trading up for uh, Jaden Daniels, mm-hmm. um, but now that he's off the board, I don't think I'm gonna trade yeah. up with because my teams. I'm resistant no. to do this because what I am going to do is draft Joe Alt, and so this has been a okay. This has been wow. something that I've been I've been thinking about the Chargers. This is more of what I would do. I'm not necessarily sure they will do this. Um, the Chargers have, have a really gutted roster. They had to get rid of a lot of players for cap reasons, and I don't think they're in the business of competing for the playoffs or really a title next year. Maybe they sneak into the playoffs, but I think what would be best for them is to sure up the other tackle position. They have Rashawn Slater, who's been really good. Sure up the right tackle side mm-hmm. and really build your offensive line trenches. Joe All is, I think, the safest bet in this entire draft. I think if there's one player that I know is going to be an all-pro, it will be Joe All. Yeah. He's fantastic. And I think you just sure up the position right there, get good in the trenches, have another rough year, and then you can start drafting skill pl- players later in you the draft. You got to build the trenches first before you get the yeah. And just I think, I think with receivers, even I think Malik Neighbors and Adunze are going to be really good. They're still riskier than just Joe All Ta- high graded tackles. You should always yeah. work out, and I think just for the Chargers, they really need a, just a really solid pick. Mm-hmm. I know it's not necessarily a position of need for them, but when you have a guy like Joe Alt who's just so talented, yep. I just really like that for the Chargers. Yep, I really like that too. All right, Raj, you dropped him for the Giants. And with the sixth pick in the 2024... By the way, I'd love, I would love to trade up into the spot if you're other teams, but I just don't think the Giants would ever trade this pick. I don't think they're trading this, especially with who, whoever's available yeah. there. With the sixth pick in the 2024 NFL Coconut Curry Podcast there Draft, the New York Football Giants select J- no Malik Neighbors. <laughs> oh, okay. You drafted JJ McCarthy. I, I gonna punch you in. The if head. Malik Neighbors is still on the board, you gotta take him. You gotta take him. You have Jones for another. Year. I swear to God, if you say they're gonna draft JJ McCarthy, oh, I hundred percent think if he's there at sexy, they're drafting him. They they love JJ McCarthy by all reports. Like love him because they're setting the smoke screens so that way other teams draft quarterbacks early so that way a receiver falls to them. Okay, I, I know I I like I like sitting there and picking Malik Neighbors. I think it's smart. I think it's silly to just waste. Uh, yes, Daniel Jones Jones's like contract. I yes. I just think I think that if in that situation the Giants get JJ McCarthy six, I think they'll draft him. But I it could be a smoke screen. Him. Yeah, it's so hard to tell with teams. Okay, Tennessee, S- Tennessee pissed to see Joe Alt off the board. Absolutely furious. I was honestly kind of surprised that Joe Alt went with the Chargers right there. They are absolutely furious because they would have loved to have Joe Alt there. Would you consider a trade for Tennessee? For who? I, I as a Jags would love to make a big splash and trade up to this spot. What are you trading? Let me check my picks. What do the Jags have? I've never really seen the Jags trade in this spot. Jags have seventeen. Okay. Yes, that you'll get seventeen. Okay, um, so it's swaps and then what? Guys, okay, no, I know that they're not interested in that pick. I know this is like not based. A lot of people haven't put put this. I would like to trade my first seventeen this year. Turn the shit off. Bro. I would like to trade seventeen, ninety six, and okay. a second last next year. Okay, so wait, so you're saying you would? Tr- okay, wait, sorry, let me yeah, organize this. His. Okay, so Tennessee. Would receive. With, who are they trading with? The Jags. Jags. Um, Wait, where would they be? Jack. Jack. Okay, so Tennessee will be sending uh, it, seven. Again, we're not going to get into like too much pit drama here because like I think ninety six can make it work. And what? I would like to trade my first, so seventeen yeah, for seven, seventeen ninety six, and and then a second and a third from next to next year. Second and a to third get up into the spot. Year. I, I know Pro Football Focus doesn't say, but I don't. They didn't even say that. The t- they're saying that the Jags aren't even interested in this pick. So you know what? Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. All right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good trade. I like that. And the reason I'm doing this is because wait, it won't let me click. Just, just figure it out. 
just meander it. Just send some other picks from. Uh, oh, I can't make this trade. Because... Well, no, no, just send some BS from uh, Tennessee for like. Oh, next so year. I'm on Pro Football Focus because I've yeah. used it before, so yeah, I can't do, just it do this. Pro yeah. And the reason yeah, yeah, I'll just matter, pick, but, yeah. pick here. I'm um, just kind of the Titans. The reason I am picking this here is I want to draft Roma Dune. Oh wait, you have the pick. Technically, still we didn't. Oh, you'll just take the Titans later in that, in that spot. Well, you can just go into the draft. Or no, you're doing profile. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Whatever, whatever. Um, but you're going to pick as a Titans later in that spot. Yes. Um, the reason I'm doing this is draft Roma Dunze. Um, I think people, the underrated story of this all has been the Jags have no receiver talent. Calvin Ridley left. Let's go Christian move. Kirk. And if you're Trevor Lawrence and you're trying to figure, if you're the Jags and you're trying to figure out Trevor Lawrence, that guy, you need to get a big time receiver in the room. Mm-hmm. I think getting Roma, Roma Dunze puts yeah. your receiver room a lot better and you can actually start to evaluate if this guy's good or not. I you was can, just about to say, I've actually watched like so actually some like, um, some tape on Roma Dunze. Um, oh, this is a guy on YouTube. I think it's, uh, I forget his name, uh, something Coleman. Um, but he does like a, like a breakdown of like a bunch of like the top prospects. And like one of the, ch- like one of the things that like was an issue with Rome was like, okay, well, he doesn't get like a ton of separation that could be like a knock on him and stuff. But the thing is, is that he, that's kind of his style essentially. Like he doesn't need that kind of separation. Like that's not like his type of receiver. Like, he is a very big body physical yeah. receiver that runs through contact and stuff. So he doesn't have like, oh, like breakaway speed like a Malik yeah. Neighbors. But you throw the ball in this dude's zip code, he's getting that. Mm-hmm. Like he had, I think it was, I think it was like a 63% catch rate on contested catches, which was 13% higher than anybody else in the draft, <laughs> nuts. which is insanity. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, you have Trevor Lawrence, shuck this guy up the rock. He'll go and get it. Yeah. And so for I'm also at the Falcons here at eight. Um, I th- love the trade out of this pick, except for the fact that they I don't, don't think anybody no. trades up here because no, um, there's, there's somebody that is so free for that you should be drafting right now. I'll go into that. Um, but I do think like this would be a spot here where the Falcons are upset because the the Bears at nine, the Jets at ten are clearly not taking JJ McCarthy. And I think nobody would. Yeah, it's going to be falling. Yeah. So I think that'll be interesting there. Um, I'm, who I'm going to go with here is I'm going to go sure up my defense a little bit and I'm going to get Brian Murphy, the interior defensive lineman. All right. For defense. Where the hell is he? Byron Murphy. Scroll down a little bit. Further. It's from Texas. Uh, Texas. Um, yeah. oh, I think that even after he got arrested, I did not know he got arrested. Well, to be honest, Jalen Carter too. Um, too but I'm going to draft him there. I think they obviously need help on the defensive line. I'm um, sure up that defense a little bit. Their offense is pretty is good in tech. I don't need to focus on the offense. Yeah. Yep. There's talks there about them drafting Dallas Turner, about Jared. Verse. That was the person Those are that I, I saw that uh, there was like yeah. heavily, heavily hinted at yep. they might be drafting if he's on the board. Dallas Turner. I see. Going there. I see a defensive lineman a little bit more as a position in need for them, but I could see him going with the defender in that spot. Well, because they already have um, Calais Campbell. I think he's still back yeah. there, so he's a defensive tackle there. Mm-hmm. So I could see where I could see either both trains of thought, where it's like you either draft a young defensive lineman to train under him, or you still have somebody there for a little bit. You draft an edge. Yep. I could see either train it's, of thought yeah. there. Which with either of those guys, you really can't go wrong. Yeah, like you really can. Um, so yeah, now you're drafted for Chicago. So with their high powered offense, which is already loaded because yeah, of Keenan trades. Allen, DJ Moore, mm-hmm. now Caleb Williams. Yep. They have DeAndre, uh, Swift. DeAndre, DeAndre Swift. Swift. They still have Cole Komet. Mm-hmm. Um, plenty of people on offense. Who you go with? You got to go defense. Invest in the defense. Dallas Turner. Good. Yeah. Him and him and Montez Sweat mm-hmm. would be like an amazing duo right there. I, I think if. Dallas Turner was selected by the Falcons. I think they would actually just select Brian Murphy down there. But yeah, like I think that I can see that. Well, I can see that. There. I can see Jared Verse too. Yeah, I can see absolutely those guys going. Um, okay, so now I'm drafting for the Jets. Jets. <sighs> so JJ Mc. Okay, you need to hear me out here. So they should draft alignment here. They're not going to. They should absolutely shore up this offensive line because they have a lot of old guys. They're kind of pushing their chips on the table, saying, we're going to win now, right? What they should do, realistically, is draft an interior offensive lineman, draft another tackle, whatever, to really protect Rodgers. I don't think they're going to do that. Because if Brock Bowers is still on the board, I think they take him. Because he is not only an incredible receiver, he is a very solid run blocker. And it's he's not like... I don't. I wouldn't say he's like a George Kittle run blocker, mm-hmm. where it's like literally adding a sixth offensive lineman. But... He's sort of like an in-between hybrid of Kelsey and Kittle, yeah. where it's like he might not be... He's better at receiving than Kittle, but he's not as good at blocking. But he's not as good at receiving as Kelsey, but he's better at blocking. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the terrifying thing is that what uh, I've seen some other draft comps putting him almost exactly similar to Aaron Hernandez mm-hmm. as the player, to be very clear, just as the player. Yeah. But it, he's a very, very good prospect for them. And I think that would, that would sure up. You would give Garrett Wilson help, mm-hmm. help some blocking on the inside. Yeah. Wait, Bowers, right? Just make sure. Bowers, yeah. Okay. Bowers. Before I click something wrong. <laughs> I, Brock Bowers feels like a Jets player to yeah, me. He does. I would probably prefer them to you take a tackle here. Minnesota. Um, yeah. So obviously on the board is JJ McCarthy. <laughs> you better draft him. You have to. You have to. I'm. Cu- if you said the Giants were drafting, you better make the I'm like curious draft him. as to Raj if you would be interested in coming up one pick with the Broncos to select. There's no way him. Minnesota's. If if JJ McCarthy is there, there's no way that Minnesota is going to be drafting. Here's my theory. Be well, first of all, I would like to know if you'd be interested in that to trade up one spot. To trade up one spot for JJ McCarthy because. The Raiders are surely making offers for 11 at this point. Are you, I'm good. Is is Denver really in a position to, like, to win now? No, like, they're, they're, they're not. Like, they're rebuilding. You can take JJ. Sean, Go ahead. Sean Payton is there. So if you're not if you're not going to trade up for the pick, no. Peter, would you want to trade up from the Raiders spot? From the Raiders now, spot. that's a different story. And the reason, so the reason I'm proposing this for the Vikings is I actually think the Vikings really need to focus on defensive talent on their team. Their offense is pretty loaded and Sam Darnold's not, in my opinion, like just a bum to the point where like, I think maybe they still draft. I know people think JJ is going to go really high and I think he'll get selected at 11 if um, no other team comes up for, for the, for the pick. But the reason I'm from the Vikings, I want to trade out of is I'm not sure necessarily, especially in year one when the Vikings are trying to win now, if, JJ McCarthy offers much more than Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. And and I also have a pick later down in the draft at 23, where I think Bo Nix or Michael Penix could be, who could maybe sit for a year behind Sam. So that's why I'm interested in trading a pick 11. So let me just do this. Hang and on. I think you could actually get quite a bit from the Raiders, even just to move up one or two picks. But obviously. What? So, okay. So this is 11. All right. So it's, so we're trading 13 for 11. Yep. And then I would be looking at your second round pick next year. Second round pick next year. Is that an Amber alert? Yeah. Nice little Amber alert right here. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. I was uh, like, what's not Amber alert. Sorry. Uh, thunderstorm warning. Thunderstorm yeah, warning. No. Okay. I'm so um, How about a third off. this year? Yeah, sure. Okay. So. Yeah. My 108. Uh, what is it? Sorry. Uh, so. E- wow. Wait, hang on. Two minutes into the game. It's 2 0. Hold up. Let me do this. So, wait. So, I'm trading you. No, I was saying uh, instead of next year's second, I could trade you this year's third. Okay. That's fine. So, I'll give you. It's I'm giving you 13 and 77, and, yep. and you're giving me Perfect. 11. All right. Cool. I can't do that, but yeah, that's fine. Um, Nick nurses. So well, yeah. yeah, then I would so, say that the Raiders would go. Up and and the reason I, like, I, this is why I want the Vikings to do again. I don't think they need JJ McCarthy right here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, so then you're going to take JJ McCarthy. Yeah. I'll take okay. McCarthy there. Cause I think right now, um, the, the Raiders are interesting whoa, because whoa, wait, what was the trade? Let me, let me um, make this clear. If JJ McCarthy falls to 11, I do think the Vikings probably end up drafting him. I don't think they should though. Two. It's just do Minnesota and Vegas and then just whatever trade. It doesn't fucking matter. Also, I just like to acknowledge, like, I don't like people are talk, talking about JJ McCarthy being a, I don't think he should even be a first round pick. I'm not. Oh, that. so I, I think he totally should be a first round pick. I just don't think what he offers skill set wise is much different than what they have from Sam Darnold. And so I think for a team that has a lot of needs like, on their, their roster, like the, their skill positions in Minnesota are great. They have a lot of other needs and I just don't, Think they need my to thing is is that when you look at what jj mccarthy did he's a distributor like that's like he's like the prototypical like brock birdie he's yeah. Kirk cousins like he's Kirk cousins but younger he's ryan brock, Tannehill. he's brock birdie like i think their team just excels a lot more if you're the vikings if you can go draft a uh, skill a player like it'll the gap between a new edge rusher let's say mm-hmm. and their current edge rusher is a lot higher than their gap between sam Darnold and jj mccarthy in my opinion the more i'm thinking about this one. the more i hate this pick the more I don't think the Raiders should do this. But you know what? Screw it. This is what we're doing. It's the Raiders. I don't care. <laughs> so, Raj, you're on the clock here with the Broncos. I feel like you got to... You 
kind of pick that you should do. That's right at the top of the board right there. What? Uh, the Ter- Terrian Arnold? Yeah. yeah. We'll go with him. You yeah. need to do, you need to invest in the defense. Put him with um oh, Sim- Simmons? Is nope. that his name? No. Pat Sertan. Sertan, yeah. I say you do that. You reunite Alabama corners together. Yeah. Every I skill, like that. Alabama's skill positions <laughs> really are very like good. That. Because look, at this point, the the offense of the Broncos is not good. And like the offensive players that are still available at this point, it's it's gonna be you're gonna be reaching on everybody because the defense, it's like top tier offense is already gone. And then you have now top tier defense, yep. and you're just gonna make the no fly zone again. Yep. And you have Sertana on one side, Arnold on the other, like yep, disgusting. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. And I'm here at 13. I traded back. And I'm going to get drafted Jazar Newton, defensive uh, interior defensive guy from Illinois. Um, big position of need for mm-hmm. them. Obviously, not an edge rusher. Um, they lost to Neil Hunter this offseason. I think you go sure up a big key part of that defense. And I think that ma- makes massive improvements on their team. Um, he's he's a little bit small. Like I'm not comparing him to Aaron Donald. He's, his frame is like an his Aaron frame Donald. is like an Aaron Donald. He's really yeah. fast, and I think that can sure up a, a big defensive problem for them. When they really need that, so yep. I'm gonna draft there. And All right, who's he, drafting for the Saints now? I am. Oh um, I hate the Saints, as people have noted. They really need a tackle because they drafted Trevor I was just about Penning a lot of years ago, mm-hmm. and that didn't work out. So I'm gonna draft Felice Fuaga from Oregon State. Yep, perfect. Love it. I love that pick. And if, if Fuaga falls to 14, they're gonna be ecstatic. They're gonna be so happy, absolutely. And then you're drafting for the Colts, I believe. Yep. Cool. Um, the Colts should be really happy with who fell to them, right? Uh, here. Yeah. Quinion Mitchell, yeah, yeah, yeah. just uh, invest in the defense. Such a kids from P- Toledo, um, yeah, doesn't go against much talent, but is a freak. Like, yeah, he's like a sauce gardener, kind yeah. Of thing, where it's it, like he's from like a really small school, but like he is, he's got all of the intangibles for a corner in the yeah. league. Yeah, so because I think he's a lot more raw than somebody like an Arnold, who's just like a pure like. It, it is almost like where you had um you had Derek Stingley and Sauce in. I forget which draft that was a couple of years back, but where it's like you have one is like the athletic freak. He's got all the intangibles. Yeah. He's a true like lockdown big man guy. And the other one is just like flawless technique is like always in the other and the uh, offensive player's pocket. Nobody yeah. even throws in the ball kind of thing that it's like that kind of dynamic. And the Colts need a cornerback so bad. Absolutely. Uh, Seattle. Uh, if th- the, the thing is like, we keep saying, like, Oh, if these players fall like to these positions, but like players are going to fall. Yeah. Like they just well, have to, especially, I think cornerback, Offensive tackle and receiver, not receivers, just tackles and uh, cornerbacks are going to fall because there's so many of them in this, in this draft yeah. in the first round. And when that happens, it's like, oh, okay, what's the difference between Nate Wiggins and Taryn Arnold? Oh, very small. So like, yeah. people are willing to just kind of wait them out a little yep. bit. Whereas, like for example, quarter, quarterbacks, like they're going high. Like because I don't think Jaden Daniels is the second best player in this draft, no. but he has to go that high. Quarterbacks are so val- valuable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think Seattle would cry if Jared Verse landed in their lap like that. Yeah. That would be an amazing pickup for them because they really need to be able to put more pressure on the quarterback. And I, he is he's the real deal. Like he's a very, very solid prospect. Yeah. Um a lot one of one of those more just like safe prospects. He's like a little bit smaller. He's not like huge. He's not like a Miles Garrett kind of uh edge rusher, but he's still like he's legit. So yeah, they would they would cry. They and you're it. back on the clock here. I am back on the clock with Tennessee. Trade. So they would also be fairly happy with this if um, Fashanu from Penn State. Absolutely. The tackle mm-hmm. fell right there, right back in their lap. So fine. They couldn't get Joe Alt. They couldn't get like the big white dude that would literally replace. Uh, oh, who is the dude that was on the Titans forever? That would always fight people. Um, uh, you know, it's number 77. He oh, has a podcast. It? It's busting with the boys. I'm literally naming everything about this dude and I'm forgetting his name. <laughs> oh, God, God damn it. All right. Whatever. You know who I'm talking yeah. about. Draymond Green. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get the big left tackle. He is um, his technique is absolutely incredible. He's a little bit on the smaller side. He's only like six. I say only like six, four instead of the Joe Alt, who's like six, mm-hmm. eight or something like that. But he's got flawless technique. Great left tackle to be able to pair with um, Will Levis yeah, down there. I I think if they're the Jags, you're like you think you just hit a home run. I yeah. think it's actually I think this trade would work Benefited out both perfectly. Teams, I think, yeah, like Jags really. I mean, Jags could listen. They could use offensive help too, like offensive line help too. But like they get a receiver, which I think they really just this need is a, a receiver. like a very even trade. I would yeah, say. and then you, <laughs> you trade back, still get a great guy who's maybe like eighty percent of what Alt is currently. Exactly. But then you get all this future draft pick talent. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that worked out really well. Yeah. And then Raj, I think you're on the clock with the Bengals. Or, no, that's me. Yeah. Oh, that's me. No, Bengals are me. Oh, okay, cool. I, I have every three. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Um, ooh, I got all an interesting around. spot here. You are because Burrow needs O line help, 
They're, up, they're upset that uh, they're upset that Brock Bowers didn't fall. It was totally yeah. drafted if he was there. Yeah. The issue is I don't know if Tyler Boyd is leaving. Uh, it looks like he might be. If he's leaving, you might want to. Oh, you can get Brian. Tom. Are you are you trying to pair up another LSU receiver? Oh, <laughs> I <laughs> feels a little early for me to get some of these receivers. You know what? The Bengals motto is screw the old line. <laughs> Joe Burrow will be fine. We're, yes. right. We're so taking right. Ryan Thomas. Oh, right. Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, he, I, yeah. That honestly, you convinced me that they would do this because <laughs> because of that. Of, of that. Because they have not they had the pen, they had the chance to draft Penny Sewell instead of Jamar yep. Chase. They did it. Yep. <laughs> They absolutely did Fantastic. It. Oh, my God. Amazing. Wow. The Rams are pumped. They the Rams have, have are really good options. Absolutely pumped. They are going to go with, uh, I don't really know how to say it. It's Latua Latu, I think. Latte Latu, yeah. Latte Latu, yeah. Ice uh, caramel macchiato latte yes. with a side of cold foam. Um, they're very happy that that because he's probably, what, second, third best edge rusher in the draft. They need edge rusher talent yep. in there. They're a little bit pissed that, um, what was it, Byron Thomas the mm-hmm. tackle from Texas didn't fall to them. Just Byron to, Murphy, yeah. Byron Murphy, just to literally plug and play Aaron Donald, but you know, whatever. Um, They're still very happy with this one. Yeah, and I think for he's he's a little bit older guy, a lot of injury history, but I think that kind of works with Sean, uh, Sean McVay. Yeah, a little bit like an old like veteran guy. Yep. Also stays in L.A. Like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually a great pick. Yeah, I think that's cool. Um, Steelers here, an interesting spot. I think they have a lot of team needs. Um. But I'm going to come up and take the first center in the draft and draft Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon. I like that. Um, really great. They really just could like they'll put him right at center. Sure up that offensive line a bit. Um, could, I do see being a little bit high, but I don't think if they, if they don't get him here, I think a team a little bit more down the board gets him, and then they just miss out on the opportunity. Considering Troy Fadenu here, considering J.C. Latham and Amarius Mims, mm-hmm. but um, Jackson Powers Johnson is clearly the best center mm-hmm. in the draft, and I think they'll just go up and take him here. Yeah. I think it's you with Miami. Is it me again? I yeah, believe. 21. Um, so you got a tackle. Tackles. Is Armstead still at Miami? Or did he retire? Oh, gosh, I have no idea. Ooh. I don't. They might need tackle help. That's there, what I'm thinking. Lie. All the tackles are suggested, too, anyways. Yeah. Um, ooh, do I go Bama Boy or do I go Washington? Go Washington. Yeah. Go Washington. He's a... He's a better prospect. Fat, we'll go Troy Fat New. Yeah, I would say yeah because I think you got to. I mean, you damn well know you got to protect Tua. Do um, not screw the Eagles here. Well, with the Eagles, this. the Eagles, as the Eagles stand. Okay, they're, well, they're pumped be, here. Before we get to the Eagles for Miami, great pick for them. Mm-hmm. Need a tackle. Got to shore up that offensive line because they are a very fast-paced offense. They need to have the trenches yep. there so that way they can get it going. One point. Pro Football Focus has wide receivers and Eagles need. I don't know what smoke like crack you're smoking, they but it's just, really good. They, they just re-signed. They have Devontae Smith, Smith, AJ Brown, Brown. Dallas Goddard. They can Goddard figure it out. End. They can figure they're, it out. Yeah, I don't know why they're okay. just listed wide receivers. So here's what we got. We got they they got two corners they're gonna go for. They got Cooper DeGean and they got Nate Wiggins. So Cooper DeGean, a lot more like athlete kind of talent. He struggles a bit on the outside, which uh against really top tier players. In the slot, though, he's a monster. He's an absolute monster in the slot. Reminds me of, like, I would say, like, 80% of Trent McDuffie, right? Nate Wiggins is another one of those just, like, very solid overall kind of players. Um, Still have Darius Slay. Still have James Bradbury. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But genuinely, I think if because James Bradbury is still going to be there. He's a good zone corner. Sorry. (laughs) All right. Calm down. Um, so Bradbury's a good zone corner. He can go up against number threes. He gets aired out when it comes to the slot, as we saw in the yeah. Super Bowl. That's why I think they go Cooper DeGene. Yep. Mm-hmm. I like Cooper DeGene here as an Eagles fan because you can do a lot with him. Of course, like the white guy, they're like, oh, we're going to move him to safety. Him but and Reed. Sidney Jarrett Johnson's there for now. But when he eventually leaves, you can kind of move him into the spot. I think he can do a lot all over the field. He might develop as an outside guy. And for the time being, you have Slay and Bradbury on the outside. That's what I'm saying. And for this year, you can put him on the inside. Oh, similar to Trent McDuffie is a great comp here. Is yeah. You put him on in the slot. Now, Sneed leaves. McDuffie comes to the outside. Yeah. Cooper DeGene, year in the slot. Be really strong there. Move to the outside or place Bradbury next saying. year. Yeah. Love so, that. That's what I'm saying there. And then... Uh, I'm at the Vikings here. Yes. And this is why I didn't draft JJ McCarthy. Because I think the Vikings might say, hey, we have the talent. We're just going to wait down the board and draft Bo Nix. 
Okay. I was, I was wondering if you're going to do Mr. Penis or Bo Nix. Yeah. So I go Bo Nix here because he's a, he's a little bit older veteran. I think he actually will sit behind Darnold for a first couple of games. Mm. And if he wins that spot outright in training camp, he will play a little bit like game five, six. If not, he just sits for the entire year. Also is a right-handed quarterback, which does impact skill position players. Yep. Not as much, obviously, yeah. but still an impact and also a much sh- shorter list of injuries. Yep. I like I like that a lot over Penix. And again, I just think the difference that Bo Nix and JJ McCarthy might offer for the teams a lot versus where at 11, sorry, drop, dropping down to 13, I was able to get a defensive guy. So I feel like I've shored yeah. up the defense a little bit mm-hmm. and then still gotten a quarterback who can... Like who can develop. Yeah. And I think Bonix is he's, I think he's got like a better arm and stuff than somebody like a JJ McCarthy, but he, he is that distributor. You saw it on yeah. the Oregon offense, incredibly fast paced pro style offense. Excuse me. That would, he'd be great at that because yep. you have, well, for now you have Justin yeah. Jefferson, uh, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. Um, like you have plenty of guys to distribute the ball to Shanahan style offense. I think that's a great pick. Yeah. I, that's, and I, I just like, I like the idea that I could get Penix or Bo Nix down the board mm-hmm. at like twenty three, and versus um, at earlier I just wanted to get a you really would waste, you would I really, waste wa- I really wanted to improve a big weakness on the team. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I also think maybe I'm a little bit higher on Sam Darnold. I actually think Sam Darnold could play a full season there, similar to how like a Jameis mm-hmm. Winston played a full season. Yeah. So I'm a little bit higher. Maybe that that might be like why. I think yeah. That's why, but anyway. All right. Dallas. No, oh, good God. <laughs> good God. They're drafting a bunch. Where is Blake Corum at 71? <laughs> Blake Corum. Okay, wait. Try to be at least a yes. little bit realistic. <laughs> um, so they need... So yeah, they lost a tackle. Um, they need... They kind of... Their offensive line, they kind of need some help in yeah. there. Oh, we'll take late them. Yeah, um, they need someone. Yeah, on yeah that, that's good. So uh, tackle from Alabama. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not an Evan Neal situation again. Um, but Hopefully. he seems pretty solid. Um, again, I have no idea because apparently nobody knows how to draft tackles from Alabama. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, Green Bay. Um, Green. Oh my God, Nate Wiggins, get him on this team immediately. Yep. This is a disgusting secondary yeah. for Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Yep. This. So they now have Jair Alexander, Xavier McKinney, Nate Wiggins. That is disgusting. Yep. Well, you see, so this is. <laughs> Um, Nate Wiggins still being there is just a result of how talented the cornerback class is yeah. and the fact that people fell for that reason. You feel like maybe yep. um, a team like the Raiders would draft uh, a cornerback earlier if there's but only if, one or two great ones in exactly. the class. But there's so many good ones mm-hmm. they followed on the board. Yeah, I think that would be something. If the Raiders don't trade up for a quarterback, I think they take. A, yep. I think they take one of those top corners. Yeah, in that absolutely. Position. And and even teams like the Steelers, if Jackson Powers Johnson doesn't get there, and all right. Goes, Pair Joey Porter Jr. with whoever. Yeah, like, exactly. Whoever's up there. So just because of talent, that would be a great pickup. I think the Green Bay would like turn the card in, in five seconds. They would, yeah. They, they, I think they would announce the previous pick and the person would be running up yep. with the card onto the stage, shoving Roger Goodell out of the way and announcing Nate Wiggins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for the Bucks here, Amarius Mims is a freak athlete um, and he's really big, but they really need more interior help. Graham Barton, from Duke has been said to he play has been very, very all three there. positions. They said that you can play tackle, guard, or center. They really need guard or center help. So let's just get him a, a more guy, a guy that can put all over the offensive line and just oh, fill I a get. hole there. Very solid. Because honestly, like with these top tier interior offensive linemen, you really can't go wrong with them. Like any year, like if you're able to get one of those like top, I'd say top three, top four into your offensive linemen, add them to your team. Yep. Don't even hesitate because Linemen will go down. They'll be injured. You need rotational guys. And to have somebody with that tier of talent even be like, fine, maybe they're not a starter initially. Mm -hmm. Like how the Eagles, they drafted Cam Jurgens. They knew eventually he was going to need to slide over to center with Jason Kelsey being older. But that you've got to get some of these like guys in rotation now to get those uh, those reps. I I really like that. For sure. I think, by the way, I think the Cardinals are thrilled with the board right now. Yep. 27. They could do, yeah. Uh, they wouldn't draft tackle because mm-hmm. they already have Paris Johnson, who was okay this past year. He wasn't amazing, but, you know, obviously he's very young. Mm-hmm. Um, so wait, who's, is it you that's drafting for them? Yeah. I think with Buddha getting older on the defense, you have other picks going down the line. You're going to have to take Kool-Aid. Yeah, you take Kool-Aid Mitch history there. I love that pick. Like Thoughts, that. Justin? Yeah, I like it. Um, I was actually looking more towards like possibly going a little bit deeper and drafting uh, Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia, would be a pick for them. They need some interior line help. Um, but well, they need 
everything. They, they <laughs> need a lot of help. The Cardinals also, have another pick in like six or yeah, seven. I also years. don't think they could go wrong with just drafting like a Marius Mims and just being like, yeah, yeah, we have a little, we can move one inside if we need to or yeah. whatever. But yeah. I don't I, mind Khalid McIntyre at all. Because the Cardinals need everything. So it's I like, think you've completely screwed over my team, the Lions, at 29. Maybe <laughs> that, but, um, BBL Lowry. But I think it's a good pick. Oh, no, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because then it's Buffalo up now. Yeah. yeah, and then so now Buffalo would get... Um, well, the a, Lions are pissed, but I don't think they're trading up any picks to go get Kool-Aid there. No, 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 no. Uh, so Buffalo desperately needs receivers. Uh, yep, they go Adonai Mitchell. Mitchell from Texas. Yep. Very solid receiver right there. With a pick they're getting him at, insane. Um, at 28 right there, that is an awesome value for what he is. Um, again, not one of those top... I mean, because right now it's like 1A, 1B with um, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and then after that, it's clear it's Roma Dunze. Yep. But, you know, these other receivers, like, they aren't... They're still very, very good, but they're just not that, like, top tier. But, I mean, with Josh Allen, this dude's going to look great. Yep. So. Um, the Lions here, they're going to go down the board a tad to go draft Chop Robinson. Good. Edge from good, State. good, good. That um, was what I was looking at for him. Yeah, yep. I think they could use Where's... some edge help here. He's a oh. freak athlete. The Lions are fortunate to have Where a young and good oh. team. I think they can yeah. afford to get a guy who might need a year to ease into the system but could be dominant in a couple of years him and hutch on either side is and, horrifying and i think the idea that you could let him slide to the ravens at 30 or just let a team like in the early second round come up and take him is like just get him now secure him yep and then who's got i got the ravens ravens uh pretty easy <laughs> yeah, pick oh, right tackle. There. yeah tackle uh amarius mims yeah. from georgia mm -hmm. Big body athlete. He's huge. He's so yeah. This is gonna get clipped. <laughs> but uh yeah, they just need tackle help. They just need to shore up that offensive line. I can tell you that the uh 49ers are pissed. They are pissed. They want pissed. Him. they they would have taken him. They would have taken him. Although they do they could get uh Tyler uh yeah, they could Guyton. Guyton's good. Uh Guyton's good there. I just don't cause they need oh god, I don't know. Because like they need tackle help because they uh they need somebody opposite of uh, Trent Williams. They don't need edge help. They need kind of defensive linemen, but most of the good defensive linemen are kind of off the board at this point. Yeah, I think um, the 49ers are in a bad spot here. They really are. Because, I mean, there's like, there's Brandon Frisk, who's like really good from Florida State, but like at that, at 31, yeah, like he's I, not. I would worth mention, it I think there. this could be a trade up position for a team who wants a receiver. Yeah. Um, but I, we're not going to make trades out of the first out round. Out of the first round. So I, I'll give them Tyler Guyton right yeah. there, uh, tackle out of um, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're in love with that pick, but I mean, you can't really go wrong with a solid tackle because yeah. like they, they need, that's, they, they live and die by Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So shoring up that offensive line. Obviously, mm. need it right there. Yeah. All right, KC. Uh, to be very clear, I think they would draft Demarius Mims if he fell to 32, being Kansas City. Um, but I think they're creaming at the idea that Troy Franklin is still there as a receiver help. So I think they go draft Troy Troy Franklin. Okay. Troy, Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin. All right. Yeah. Okay. So they draft Troy Franklin. All right. Cool. So that's a draft. Yeah. Yeah. That's I guess the first round. Yeah. As a, as a debrief, and we'll post this on our social media. Hopefully, I don't know if you guys have an image of the first round or anything like that. I can print it out. Okay, because I can't make the trades because um, my teams are wrong. But yeah. I guess what are like some key storylines we're looking into the draft about what teams do? Like, um, um, somebody might trade into the three. That's kind of the big mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, trading into three is going to be the big hot spot because New England needs absolutely everything. Um, so I could see them easily trading out of there. Um, I could see. Do you see a team like the Raiders? being interested enough in trading up that many picks for a yes. Drake May? Or do you think they would be more happy to see if they can get McCarthy a little uh, bit down So the are we just assuming that Caleb Williams and Jaden Dan is going 1-2? Yes, let's just assume that okay. for the thought experiment. For the thought experiment, I could I could see, because of how young Drake May is, he's only like 20-something. Yeah. Um, he looks at two. He has babies. Yeah, but I could definitely see the Raiders trading up for that because like you need a young... Because yeah. like you have Devontae Adams out there. You did just lose Josh Jacobs, which sucks, but... I mean, you have Devontae Adams. You definitely have a safety blanket that he can constantly be throwing to. You just build up the offensive line. And obviously in later rounds, because of how deep these um, receiver classes are, yeah, you'll eventually be able to build that kind of young core around him. Because like now you have like that centerpiece. Of like, look, this kid's got a lot of talent. Yep. He doesn't start immediately. But we've got him. Yeah, I agree. I think for me, for the Raiders, I'm just like, 
do you get rid of that many draft picks and you're not that talented of a team to get up? It's like this debate of like, how much do you get for your your, your guy at quarterback? I don't think they go for Drake May necessarily. If Jaden Davis yeah. falls to three, they're going for him. They are they're trading the house for him because mm-hmm. it seems like they love him. But I think that could definitely be an option for them. Yeah. Holy wind. By the way, if anybody can hear in the background, there are currently a uh, lot of wind going on. Our yeah. doors are slamming. It's our fourth roommate. It's, it's our ghost. fourth roommate. There's a thunderstorm coming on yeah. right now. Oh, so. um, a key in our draft is uh, Jared Verse at 16 would be a home run for the Seahawks. You oh, yeah. Imagine. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be very curious. Just to this see. is an interesting draft this year. Yeah, no one. I think the J.J. McCarthy, like what is a smokescreen? What isn't? What teams yeah. view him as? Like actually not, want him or like, not? Yeah. Like I... I Kind of seems hard to believe he'll follow to eleven, but maybe he could. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think it'll be an interesting draft. Yep, good thought experiment from us. I like yeah. it. NBA playoffs are in full swing. Yep. As soon as we end this recording, we're gonna go watch the Sixers yep. game. Um, so that's gonna be it for the Coconut Curry podcast. This episode, yes. episode twenty nine, um, a lot shorter than I ended up thinking it would be, which is still an hour and a half long. Um, <laughs> so that still shows you how much we uh, thought about. Go with the Tyrese. So there you go. Sorry, Raj is getting hyped. We're going to go watch the game. Oh, you cherry picking. Mm. <laughs> we'll come back on episode 30 next yes. week to discuss all the NBA playoff drama. Yes. See you course. next time. Oh, Butler's Giants, Butler. Oh, no. Leak neighbors aroma. Jimmy Butler just went down with the knee injury.